The gentle shore in Virginia Beach began to roar. The waves and seagulls rose as the nearby convention center was filled with electricity. High school senior explosive wrestlers. The NHSCA, known across America as the National High School Coaches Association, has created the 24th annual High School Senior Wrestling Championships. Hi, everybody. Welcome here to Virginia Beach. Alongside Hall of Famer, former star William & Mary, Kevin Hazard, I'm Ralph Bidnarczyk. Here inside the convention center, we're slated to have a sensational day of wrestling, Kevin. Nearly a minute into this second period at 182 pounds. Yep. He gave the point. He says, I'm not going to ride him. Again, that it's is supreme confidence. Anytime you see that. Nice single in deep. That's his first time he's been in deep. Clemens in with the single. Hot with the splits to, to counter. And there's the two. That's another change that changed in the last couple of years. If you wrap up both ankles on the out-of-bounds, they give the takedowns. 3-1 Brooks Clemens. So again, for the second time today in Virginia Beach, we have seen somebody concede the escape and then come right back and score right away, showing you that supreme confidence. They're not worrying about the one point. They're worrying about the bigger picture. Von Eggety saying in their last match, same thing, except he did ride him for two seconds. Okay, now we're at 3-2. So the escape Brooke from Jared Haught, Brooks Clemens in the red. Still leading here, 40 seconds into this third period. Hot tried to take a shot. Clemens dropped it and hit him like a linebacker. And I know it had to rattle Jared Hot's teeth. Not backing up. Clemens is not backing up. Something I don't like to see, and I haven't seen it yet in this tournament. Shut down completing with a minute to go. Hot tried a shot again. Clemens again blocked him just with his chest. He's really strong through his upper body. He's uh, He was an All-American, a, a Greco All-American a couple years. Oh, he's back in on a single there. Clemens is back in. Nice counter. Nobody thinking about doing a stall warning in this match. It's only it's a 3-2 score, but there's a lot of action because it's 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 shot counter shot counter, reshot. So real high level wrestling by both these guys. So far, Clemens has been the more effective. He just again hot tries to take a shot. Clemens just lowers his base, catches him chest to chest and rattles his teeth again. Hot's gonna think twice about coming back in on that. Final 10 seconds here for Jared Hot. He trails 3-2 to Brooks Clemens. And we're down to five. And, and Hot. And he's gonna make shot, that stand up. That's gonna be it, Brooks Clemens, state champion. He's had an excellent senior year. Hope High School, they were the state overall champs as a team in Georgia and Cobb County. Brooks Clemens wins 3-2 over Jared Haught of West Virginia. Two-time defending state champion, second as a sophomore. And the New England champion, junior All-American. He'll be a senior All-American, so 195. Here's Leonardo Trinidad. And Garrett Crone, Arvada High School, Arvada, Colorado. Trindad. Oh, nice shot. Nice single leg by Crone. Showed why he's a three-time state champion. He was second here last year at 182 pounds, bumped up a weight class. And Trindad. And there's the two again. You wrap up both legs on the out of bounds. If you're in bounds, that's not control. In the out of bounds, they give that as control. He, he, well, the other factor about Garrett Crone is that he's also starting to come on. He watches more film than anybody else, according to his high school coach, John House. He can think wrestling as well as perform as a high school, as a high school wrestler. Now, Trindad, Trindad won his semifinal match with a ride out. So he's pretty good on top. He won one nothing in the one nothing by riding his opponent out. This is Leonardo Trindad from Billerica, Massachusetts, who's undecided 
This will be a, a big resume booster for him, and he looks for the escape here. Trailing 3-1 as the third period begins. Crone's going to have to let him go, or else he was going to get hit for stalling. Uh, Trindad with his first shot, but it's a bad shot. Crone looking for the takedown. There's the two. Garrett Crone just added some separation. He has a 5-2 lead early in this third period. Uh, Leonardo Trindad of Massachusetts. So a three-time defending state champion from Colorado and Crone, a two-time state champion in Leonardo Trindad of Massachusetts. Crone with the better shots, the, uh, Trindad with his only shot, kind of overextended himself. Looks like Garrett Crone is going to be able to put this thing away. And, and there it is. You can almost say it's, well, they're going to redo that caution. full start. And that's the bout. Garrett Crone, you could say it was scientific. <laughs> he was scientific. He was also very dominant, scientifically dominating on his feet. 5-3 takes care of Leonardo Trindad here at the 2013 NHSCA Senior Nationals from Virginia Beach. Creating a financial safety net can seem like an impossible goal. Complicated, intimidating, something other people get to do. But once you take the first step, you'll find there's nothing standing in your way. MetLife. I can do this. So we move on to 220. And it's going to be first, we'll show you Jaden Cox. He is from Hicksman High School in Columbia, Missouri. Spencer Empey will be his opponent. Spencer is going to wrestle at Cal Poly. He had a lot of interest, but Spencer Empey of Nevada, Sparks, Nevada, and Reed High School. He is a three time defending state champion. He lost to Jaden Cox here last year. Now they're both they're both ranked in the top five in their in the weight class. Jaden Cox ranked either first or second all year. Uh, Spencer MP ranked fifth. But this is this is probably our premier bout. These are two of the best in the country. Interesting that that MP is choosing to stay close to the edge. Cox very smart. Oh, there's Cox is in. Trying to escape, MP. he does get out of bounds. It's his first time through five bouts. You know, Kevin, that we've seen somebody come out as aggressive as Jaden Cox did in the first half minute. And you knew, MP seemed to knew he was gonna do it because he immediately went to the edge. Now he's staying in the center. I watched Cox in his semifinal bout and he is that, that great combination. And that time he got it. And that time you saw he very pointedly kept his feet in bounds. He's good on his feet, he's good on the bottom. He's a combination of strength and speed. But 
not just strength and speed because he has really, really good technique. I, I saw Brian Smith talking about him, the coach. He says, I've known Jaden Cox since he was five years old. He's been in my office since then because I coached him in football in the junior leagues when he was five. So it's almost been a foregone conclusion that he was going to. Oh, he's locked up the cradle and uh -oh. emphatically put him to his back, and it's looking ugly. Oh. MP God. fortunate that he got out of that. He will have to accept the consolation prize because – this bout is still going, but it's 4 nothing. Jaden Cox almost ended it. That was a, that was a Greg Ruth-type cradle. Jaden Cox takes that 4-0 lead into the second period. Spencer Ampey, here he is. He's the fifth best kid in the country. He's in the top 50, and he's, being, he's not really in this bout so far. Let's see if he can do something. Cox starts in the bottom. And they're just going to let this go. If nothing happens, oh, gosh, you, almost, you see that? He's almost hitting a complete split. That's mm -hmm. what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. And a 220 pounds. 220 pounds. And like you mentioned, he, he does things that 145 pounders are expected to do. Yeah. But Cox had a difficult decision, or he still... I think has won. I'm sure the offer is still there, but he had an opportunity to train at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs for a whole year after high school or to go directly to Missouri. So he knew he had that choice there. He passed up the invitation. No, he will go directly to Missouri. But I would imagine, I think we'll still see that Brandon Slay, the Olympic champion, gave him the offer. I imagine we'll see Jaden Cox training up in Colorado Springs at some point in the next few years. I, I, I think so. He is the real deal. And you, and you just saw it right there. Spencer Empey trying to slow the bout down, going in on an ankle, and Jaden Cox just turns in, overpowers him, and kind of, I don't know if it's really a move, he just kind of yucked him to his back. And just, and just now he cuts him. Cox totally dominating this match against a really, really good opponent. It's, it's, it's not that MP is bad, it's Cox is that good. There's that, that's what I was talking about. That, wow. That kind of speed, that kind of power, and that kind of technique for a 220 pound high schooler, he looks like a senior level wrestler on, for the Olympic level, and he's 18 years old. You, know, you better believe that the Missouri coaching staff is going to take a hard look at Jaden Cox, 205-3 and three in his high school career at Hickman High School. I'd love to know who the three are and how they exactly took him down because Spencer Empey, he had a, a winning streak of 116 in a row. That was the longest active win streak in Nevada high school history. And he is going to Cal Poly, but he had offers from Princeton, Drexel, Stanford. He chose Cal Poly. This is a high-level wrestler that Jaden Cox is doing this to and dominating him at 10-1. But Jaden Cox as with impressive, a major 10-1 decision. As impressive as a prospect that you will see entering the NCAA ranks next year, Jaden Cox. First up, this is Michael Hughes, 17 years old, out of Smithtown West, Smithtown, Long Island. Hughes has had a tremendous season. He also lost his mother during the season and dedicated all of his success to her. And Hughes hoping to cap that off today. Meanwhile, Will Geary, he'll be in the Navy from Topeka High School in Topeka, Kansas. He is a football signee with Kansas State. Hughes also has football options. So did Geary have wrestling options, one, two, but Geary is also four, a tremendous one, two, defensive two, end prospect you know and a power lift or two. Michael Hughes, taller, but Will Geary, very strong, very active. He's not real tall, but he's just, again, it, it, I don't remember the kid earlier, but he's got the, the calves and the thighs of a, well, power lifter. He was the number one power lifter in the state of Kansas this year. He was the Kansas 6A defensive player of the year and he was all state offensive lineman as well as a two time Kansas state champion. He's 
going to go to Kansas State this year. Michael Hughes from New York went went into the state championships this year as the as the sixth seed and went all the way went in undefeated still as a sixth seed because New York is a very very tough wrestling state and won his way through won a, a New York state title not only did he win Kevin we should we should point out winning winning is one thing but he had 31 pins on yeah. his way to a 42 and 0 record that's a little different than just winning yeah, he wasn't he wasn't doing the heavyweight. I'm winning one nothing, but he is he is he's six three six four. He's if 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 I'm a coach and he walks in my room and says, Coach, I want to wrestle, I say, Okay, that's a real good thing. And he's a he's a heck of an athlete. He beat the defending runner up Brandon Johnson from Washington in the semis last year. He beat him one nothing. No Gary. Scoring. Gary has three falls coming into this match, including a fall in a minute in the semis. Oh, nice shot by Gary, but nice counter by, by Michael Hughes. Hughes has not dominated his opponent. He's won four to two, three zero, and two to one, but he's beaten them all. Uh, in his match in the semis, Hughes won on a stall call. Ten so. seconds left in this first period, and here's some aggression from Geary in the Navy. Geary able to take down Hughes, and he is able to score. So Will Geary, with just about three seconds left in the first period, he's able to score. And Hughes, I think, in some ways surprised and felt he was also out of bounds when that occurred. It was... It was the, as long as somebody's supporting points are inbound, you score. The only thing Hughes couldn't get is back points. If he'd have done that five, three feet earlier or closer, it would have been a 4-0 lead right now because he took him to his back and kept him there. He did it emphatically. He has great power, and he's pretty good technique and pretty good speed. He, it, it's funny. You get guys like this size that are only six foot, and you think that the other guy would be able to just use their leverage much too powerful. Yeah, Geary only listed six foot two ninety. So Hughes, there's a bigger disparity between the two in terms of reach. And Hughes, Hughes is a really good sized heavyweight. I mean, he's probably 240, 250 and about six three. Yeah, they're both built a little bit differently as Hughes just scored. With the escape, so it's 2 1 about midway through this second period. But you can see, even though they're both heavyweights, they are different in styles and physiques and approach. Well, Gary's got a set of shoulders. I mean, they're just extremely wide, extremely powerful. Hughes long, but, but Gary has been, and Gary has been the more aggressive. In the semifinals, Hughes was more aggressive. I didn't get to watch Geary as much because he got a first period fall. One minute in, he just kind of snapped, pulled, and just powered the guy to his back. And there he's back in. And he's able and to he, take down he, Hughes. Scoring. And he's scoring back points. He body locked him. He kinda, Two more. He kind of suckered him in. 6-1 Will Geary scoring four quick points. And showed you some of the powerlifting state championship experience he had this past winter time in Kansas. Well, the other thing he did that was really, really nice, he, he was going full tilt in one direction. Hughes went to counter, and he took him the other way. He body locked and took him directly in the other way. Hughes was not ready for it. He took him straight to his back. Really, really nice move by Will Geary. Gary will start third period in the bottom position. Let's see if Hughes can do anything on top. If, if Gary's smart, he will not want to stay underneath the taller man. Gets right to his feet, into the, ooh. Six one lead, decided not to go chest to chest. I think that's really smart. If I got a six one lead, I'm not going chest to chest with anybody. 
but Hughes looks like the 220 pound match third period person in winning not doing as much if I'm Will Gary I'm getting to my feet and I'm getting away because he's been dominant on his feet Hughes is hoping to wrestle in college but he has some football interest he was all county on Long Island but wrestling would appear to be a sport he'd have some better options with but you can see the, the frame, the reach, and some He pinned his way through that, that Suffolk right. County tournament right. this Th year. 30, 31 pins out of 42. So it would appear that would be the place to go. But you see him here against Geary, who's a, a big football prospect, too. And you can see him with that long reach. He almost looks like he could be a left tackle for you. Yeah. He, he, he's already there. But I, I tell you what, though, if I'm a football coach, I'm looking at Michael Hughes and go, I can put 50 pounds of muscle on that yeah, frame. That, that frame is has and a lot Gary more work to in do. again with a 6-1 lead, still going for it. Now with a, or I'm sorry, it was a 7-1. Now he's got a major. I think this is our second major in a row. We had a couple of tight matches early on. Our our last two have been dominating performance by by really really good wrestlers. Will Geary 9-1. Jaden Cox from Missouri at 220 took care of Spencer MP 10 1 in the bout preceding this. And as the final seconds come off the clock, Will Geary, this appears like it's going to be his final high school match as a wrestler. And if this is the way he goes out, if he's not in any other tournaments, this is the way to go. Here's Darren Davis from Sitka High School, Sitka, Alaska. And Tommy Alloy, right here from Virginia, Forest Park High School, hometown of Montclair, hoping for an opportunity. And we've seen college coaches all throughout the week here in Virginia Beach. So Tommy Alloy in the Navy, Darren Davis in the red as we go with 106. And they're both very aggressive, chasing that potential scholarship right away. Tommy Alloy. Uh, Virginia State champion this year, but but he has been all up and down the East Coast. He beat the the, the, the run up from the AAA states in Pennsylvania in a tournament earlier this year. That was uh, Connor Sheehan. That was in January. But Darren Davis is a two-time state champion from Sitka High School in Alaska. And but Tommy, oh, that was beautiful. And that's and I've watched him do that all year. He has he gets in and he has just a beautiful throw by. And he's he's got great great power. There were three, they took third in the AAA states this year. His team did, 
they only took four guys to states, but three of them were state champions, and that that popped them up to third place. They had a just a tremendous run for the title. Uh, Darren Davis. Darren Davis is a two-time Alaska State champion, and his team took seventh this year in the small schools, and he's one of two state champs for Sitka. Now, his girlfriend, Deidre Creed, he met her on the wrestling mats. Yeah, as I understand it, they're, they're, uh, they're about uh, one year apart, and the, I, I would say the most interesting aspect about wrestling your girlfriend is that Darren hated wrestling her, and he tried to end every match early. He didn't want to hurt her. He was a little, so instead of kind of being tentative or for you're not going to forfeit, but you don't want to lose to your girlfriend. And fortunately for Darren, he never did. No, he just, he pinned her rather than tech falling because he liked to tech fall people. Now, that was a nice little short dump. Tommy, not a real tall wrestler, but very, very powerful. And that's the second time he's gotten a throw. Take so down for Tommy Alloy, 4-1. And fortunate for Darren Davis, time ran out on that first period, but Tommy Alloy appearing like he is in control. He's really tough on top. And there he is. He just that nice little throw. And there it is. Oh, oh, oh. And he's got the half. He's got the half. Davis in trouble. But Davis Alloy. Is in big, oh, but he's going to come out. Alloy continues to score. 7-1, 9-1 now. The seconds can't come off the clock fast enough for Darren Davis. He's got five seconds left in the second to try Boy, to regroup. But Tommy Alloy. Beautifully done, his skill and quickness and technique there. You can take that 10 seconds and make that a highlight clip. Darren Davis able to score at the escape, but it's 9-2 with 15 seconds left to go. Tommy Loy, he had a big smile if you saw the pictures online when he won the state championship back in February. And it should be a really nice one here coming up for the 17-year-old out of Forest Park High School in Virginia. Congratulations, Tommy Alloy, the national champion here in Virginia Beach. 9-2 in a dominating performance over Darren Davis. Creating a financial safety net can seem like an impossible goal. Complicated, intimidating, something other people get to do. But once you take the first step, you'll find there's nothing standing in your way. MetLife. I can do this. So we move on at 113 pounds from Moore, Oklahoma. This is Zach D'Amico, sophomore high school. Aaron Asid, he is 18 years old from Ohio, Brexville High School. That's a high school power there right behind St. Edward. And he is signed and committed to Purdue. Still hanging around and he will be in the down position looking for the escape. And Asid on top. And here's a case where we've seen Great confidence from wrestlers on top, just giving up the free point. Yeah, not in a one nothing bout right not now. Not in a one nothing bout. Like, but 
Now it's 1-1. One, one. We're into our, and this is almost prototypical. When you've got two evenly matched kids and they're good from all three positions, it usually goes 1-1, one, one, and, it's, and it's a takedown in the third period, or they get a first period takedown and they can make it stand up. But again, it just what I'm seeing, you know, and it's almost like a chess match, it looks like, and it, it's still 1-1, one, one, but Assad has now been the more aggressive for the past period and a half. He's been pushing him to the edge, and if he keeps doing it, there's going to be a stall call. Not, er, not yet. There it is. There's your stall warning. He's, had, he's been pushing D'Amico to the edge of the match. Not pushing, D'Amico's been backing up. So that's kind of what I said. You get into that chess match, now now D'Amico's going to have to open up. and Let's see if Assad can capitalize on that. Or let's see if D'Amico will change up a little bit and do a little more offense. But both out of tradition-rich states, Ohio perennially one of the best high school states in the uh, in the country. Oklahoma turned out NCAA champ after NCAA champ. We're down to the last 30 seconds. Assad is, there's our, our first good shot by D'Amico. He's in, but he's not really trying to, he needs to get his knees up underneath him, see if he can do something with this. Assad looks comfortable where he is and there's the stalemate 16 seconds they really have time for one really good shot and it, I don't think you'll see a, a stall with this amount of time they'll let the, the kids decide the match and and it kind of did wake D'Amico up now he ha he has become more aggressive and the sides is uh, gonna allow it to go to overtime they both are, so we go to overtime. Chance for Zach D'Amico, Purdue bound Aaron Acid. And while D'Amico maybe hasn't been the most aggressive, but he has not allowed Acid to do what he wants to do. So as we start the overtime period, 1-1 here in Virginia Beach, it's our first overtime bout. Can Zach D'Amico add to his resume? He has aspirations of going into the military, just 113 pounds. If one, of those, if one of those academy schools happens to get a letter from somebody saying, hey, by the way, would you like to get the NHSCA Senior National Champion on your team last minute in the spring? Oh, they might, they might go for that. Plus, you've got you're in Virginia and the Quantico wrestling, the Marines, they, they, they wrestle all over the world. If he goes in the military, that might not be a bad thing. And that doesn't count against college. You can come out after two years. So 21 seconds left in this overtime. That's the right, the right amount of time. And Aaron Acid in Navy, Zach D'Amico in the red. Let's see, he's backing up again. But, but they're not going to call it because he hasn't taken a shot. They're not going to give him this win if he doesn't at least take a shot. And that's not a shot. There it is. First overtime completed. 1-1 one, one still. Aaron Acid had the lead through two, then Zach D'Amico was able to pick up the 1.40 the escape, and right now that's the reason why we are here in sudden death. Let's see if one of them could ride him out. This could come to ultimate ride out there. They, they're fairly evenly matched, score-wise. He's, he's gonna have to let him go. <laughs> 20 seconds. Oh, and he's using his length, he's being able to stay they're going to call a stalemate. Here. Oh, it's coming right back behind. And there's the stalemate. They'll let that go for a couple of seconds, but they'll call a stalemate because you only have 30 seconds to get away. They try and give you an opportunity. And he really wasn't trying to improve his position because he couldn't. So that was a really, really good call. He's got to take him back to the mat. Nicely done by Zach D'Amico. And if he escapes, it's not over because they go through the whole 30-second period. And so if D'Amico escapes, Asad will have whatever time's left to try and take him back to the mat. But he was, oh, and they let that go. 
D'Amico, a little bit of a false start. There is the escape, Zach D'Amico. 20 seconds left, and now Acid, you see how aggressive he gets. He knows he's got precious seconds remaining in this senior national in Virginia Beach. D'Amico and Aaron Acid in the up position. Oh, that was great. Great shot by D'Amico. He doesn't have to score, but he can just take time off the clock. Nice shot by Zach D'Amico. Zach D'Amico four seconds away. I was going to say before he took that shot, he had been warned for stalling, so he was going to have to do something. Oh, he's in deep, but he can't get it. The clock runs out on Aaron Acid. Congratulations, Zach D'Amico. He is a national champion here in Virginia Beach, and he knocks off Purdue bound Aaron Acid. 2-1 is the final. He just enhanced his resume in a big, big way. Micah Perez, a San Diego kid who is out and about on the boardwalk this week. John Brown from West Mesa High School. He is from Albuquerque, New Mexico. He'll step in and he is a three-time state champion as a junior and a senior and as a freshman. Micah Perez, one of three California finalists, which is not surprising. California, one of two states, only has one champion. You take, if you, oh, beautiful shot by Deshaun Brown. Now he's a three-time Arizona State champ, West Mesa High School, and we have injury time. I think he bounced his nose as he went. Uh, and how they are hungry to win, even in, even with having, in Deshaun Brown's case, he's already won three state championships. He's got his scholarship. He could have sat home and been on Facebook. And here he comes with a takedown of wow. Perez, and he picks up two more. 5-1, Deshaun Brown. And, it, and if we're going freestyle, the match is over because he took it from his feet to flat on his back. That would have been a touch fall. Did not hold him for the two, did not pick up back points. But kind of took the wind out of the sails of Micah Perez. Now we're halfway through the bout. Here, still 5-1 with 10 seconds left. And Perez trying to get the escape and get to the third, still within four, maybe even three. But Brown has a great hold on him. That's it, end of two. So it'll stay 5-1. But Brown, I think we saw, we saw how he can impose his will through that second period compared to the first. Inter interesting choice by Micah Perez. He chose top to start the third period with a 5-1 lead. I, he wasn't having a lot of success on the bottom, and and uh, Deshaun Brown took him down twice, so maybe not so interesting. Maybe the smart choice. 5-1, but Brown, I, when I watch him, and now he's at 6-1, so let's see if he can get another takedown. Now, Brown will not go chest to chest. You got a 6-1 lead, you're in the third period. I would just work his head, in fact he did, work, work. You know, and they're gonna, now, he's got a stall warning. There's, there's too much time left, he can't be backing up. If he backs up, he needs to do like the last match and just you get, get a shot, take a, like that, take a fake shot, something, stay in the center of the mat, Protect your lead. Not like that. He's going to get called. He's going to get hit for a stall, but he's got a bunch of points to give. So, Yeah, it's up to 6-1 now for Deshaun Brown. You always feel like Deshaun, he is at his best when he stays completely aggressive. Right. What we saw in that second period. His coach just said, take Deshaun, take a shot. You know, they'd rather see him give up a takedown on an offensive move rather than give up while he's playing defense. Yeah, see, that was nice. That was nice. Do that in bounds. 39 seconds, Deshaun Brown taking control of this bout. And at 120 pounds in the second period. 6-1 lead, he's in the Navy singlet. Micah Perez uh, just outside of San Diego, El Centro. 
California Central Union High School in the red with 25 seconds left from the 2013 NHSCA Senior Nationals in Virginia Beach. I'm Ralph Benarchik with former William & Mary great Kevin Hazard and Wrestling Hall of Famer. Glad to have you with us. This is going to go to Deshaun Brown. He is leaning on Perez, but with just five seconds left to go, he's going to have a very comfortable victory for the three-time New Mexico state champion. 6-1, he eventually plays enough offense even at the end of that third period to put Micah Perez away. Another interesting battle, you're going to look at T.J. Fabian here from Shorm Wading River, man, Suffolk County, all the way out east. And his opponent at 126 from Wyoming Valley West High School, Larksville, Pennsylvania, Carl Krosavage. T.J. Fabian won a state championship. Oh, nice. Krosavage in early. Trying to throw. Fabian. No, nothing yet. Wow, that's a lot of action for no points. And it's still 0-0. Both coming out <laughs> aggressively here in the first 20 seconds. They said, let's go home. We're done. Now, Fabian, this year at the Suffolk uh, County Championships, got upset in the quarterfinals and had to win back through, including beating Corey Jamison, who had beat him in the quarters. Oh, and T.J. Fabian, with a little dump, picks up the takedown on, on Kyle Krosavage. Nicely done. So he had to get a wild card to go to the state tournament, and he ended up winning the tournament. But that must have been unnerving. Yeah, it didn't stop him. I bet you it built tremendous character for T.J. Fabian to do that. But as we said, he gets to train with all those great Suffolk County wrestlers on Long Island. Certainly a hotbed, particularly on the East Coast. But with the new New York State rules, and this has been under some controversy, Kevin, not every state does this, but New York State allows wild cards because they moved from a, well, a big schools division and a small schools division about 10 years ago. And that came under some controversy. Under the old rules, T.J. Fabian's career would have been over in the Suffolk County Tournament. But under the new rules, he was allowed to go through the state Russellbacks and go through and eventually capture the state championship. So it's come under controversy, and I know some states have different rules on that. 3 nothing is the lead now for T.J. Fabian in the red singlet as the second period gets going. But Krasavage on top, staying aggressive. He's going to wrestle for CAA Coach of the Year, Rob Anspach, for the Colonial Athletic Association champion, Hofstra Pride again. Coach Rob Anspach, he's going with that Iowa State mentality of always looking for offense and attacking, attacking, attacking. I think Chris Savage has gotten all the text messages about that 
from the way he's approached things here. Aggressiveness again. Chris Savage turned over. And two and points for Fabian. That was a beautiful, again, just he just controlled the arm, hits that nice dump. He's, he's been dominant on his feet. Chris Savage trying to throw, but, but Fabian being a little more conventional, hitting those nice dumps, now with a 5-0 lead. Comfortably cruising halfway through the bout. Chris Savage was trying to get in underneath that leg, couldn't. And they'll let this go for a second, and they'll call stalemate. He's really not able to do anything with it. Can't improve his position. So 35 seconds left in the second period. And there's your stalemate. No, well, your, your, right. your, your eyes are a lot more experienced. 5-1, TJ Fabian, meanwhile, he's been in control. He scored early in the first. And here the third period beginning with him seeking a senior national championship to go along with what he did in New York State this year winning at 126, and they'll stalemate again. The, the thing about this, it's 5-1, but I don't look at this as over because both of these guys have tried big moves, and if somebody relaxes, if Fabian relaxes, Crow Savage, there he is. He's back in that underhook. He's looking to throw. Now, Fabian's wrestling smart. He's not going to let him in. I'd give up a stall call rather than let... Crow Savage into my, my, um, into my chest. Now, Fabian's been warned, but there's a minute 20 left. Crow Savage really doesn't have time to take him down three times, and I don't think he's good enough to take him down three times to win. But he does have throw potential. He's in, he's in deep on that underhook. That was smart. Great move by TJ Fabian. Slipped underneath the underhook, got in on the leg. If nothing else, he's going to run a lot of clock. You run a lot of clock, you got a 5-2 lead. That's smart. Let's see. He's going to try and turn into him. Try and get higher, get higher, get higher. They're both going to try and get higher. Again, this is this is something. It's it gets all. I just want to say roly poly, and you really don't know how it's going to end up. It's not clean, but it's effective. There it is. He's into the chest. He's into Savage. the chest. Crow Savage into the chest. Gets the takedown. Looking for more. Copper Savage cut. quickly five four. And getting a point back, T.J. Fabian, but they're still going at it before finally the boundary. Rescuing T.J. Fabian, he was in a heap of trouble. Kyle Chris Savage came out of like a storm. We're at 6-4. He's going to try and get, go back in. He's going to get hit for Stalin. And he went for the throw, not in a good position. It's T.J. Fabian that is able to survive. Kyle Crow Savage, final score is 10-4. We had eight points between the two wrestlers in the last perhaps 10 seconds. But TJ Fabian, New York State champion at 47-1. And in Virginia Beach, captures the senior nationals here in a 10-4 bout that was a lot closer than the score indicated. Creating a financial safety net can seem like an impossible goal. Complicated, intimidating, something other people get to do. But once you take the first step, you'll find there's nothing standing in your way. MetLife. I can do this.
We move on to 132 pounds. They call this young man three, Javier Gasca the third of Kingsburg High School, Kingsburg, California. And his opponent, another from New Mexico, hometown of Albuquerque. They call him Lolo. He's known for his great hair. Lawrence Lolo Otero, three-time state champion in New Mexico, including back-to-back -back as a junior and a senior. What I like about Otero is he went to Volcano Vista High School. Now that's an interesting name. Ooh! And that was an interesting little throw by Otero. Gasca the third took a little half shot. And, and Otero almost took him to his back. Otero, 36 and 1 as a senior to capture his latest state title. 105 and 2 on his high school career. Now, right there at the end of the first period, Gasca didn't have the takedown but he had Otero in a position where he was going right to his back. The referee was not looking to give takedown points, but he could have called a defensive fall, and that's what he was looking for right as the clock ended. So Otero now riding pretty tough. This, they're pretty evenly matched. They're both ranked in the top, you know, top 20 in their weight class in high school. There's the point for the escape. So it's one nothing, Javier Gasca the third. Now, Otero's nickname was Lolo, and Gasca's friends call him three, which is pretty interesting. So we got this is the first first match we've had where both kids have kind of unusual nicknames. Well, they're certainly both winners. In the case of Gasca, get get a load of this. He got here with three straight pins. Remember, this is a senior national event. If you hear of a pin here at the convention center, people start running around and screaming and getting attention. So to do it three days in a row, that is, that is abnormal. But Gasca did that to get here, especially in the quarterfinals. He knocked off Cole Murray of Florida, who was a two-time high school All-American, to do so. And then he knocked off the South Carolina state champion, two-time South Carolina state champion, with a first period of pin. So he has been maybe wrestling the best all season right now in April for Javier Gasca, the third, and he builds a three nothing lead here late in the second period and still working. And they call that potentially dangerous because the knee kind of locks out. Now Gasca also beat Dennis Gustafson in the semifinal who had won this tournament twice. He won it with the freshman and sophomore, was runner-up here last year. Gustafson, a teammate of Tommy Alloy, beat Brandon Jeske and oh, almost, almost, but not quite. A reversal in backs for Lawrence Otero. Watch the back, watch the back. Saved get, by the buzzer. Is, I get nervous when they get yeah. their backs twisted. Yeah, you know, Otero right now, as we start the third period, he's got plenty of time, but he'll start underneath. Gascon the third on top. Now, if he can get out, this could get interesting. Like Crow Savage, Otero can throw. And if you can throw, you're never out of a bout. The problem is... Three, as he's known to his friends, Gaska, is pretty tough on top. So first of all, he's got to come out. And he's going to look. And he's not staying behind. Okay, Lawrence Otero to his feet. Oh, and the Granby roll, and he picks up the one. Let's see if Otero will try and throw. But he doesn't really have to. He's only down 3-1 to take down, and he ties it up. Oh, that was a not a good move by Lawrence Otero trying to go over the top of Gasca. Can you do that? Do you think you could do that split? Uh, not, not in a million years. No. 
Kevin, in your time, you know, you were a, what, 158 guy? 158. Could you do that during no. your time? Never. We never thought about trying to do the splits when I was in college. Just a different generation. Different generation. That, that's the, it, and, it, and again, it's, it's, it's a change. It's an evolution. It changes. It looks the same, but it's not the same. They, these kids are so much better, so much, they know so much more technique than we ever thought about knowing. And it I, seems like necessary. If you're under 140 pounds, you better be able to do a split. Yes. yes. I, I'm not sure if you can compete if you can. You need that. 30 seconds here in the third period. Javier Gasca, the third, in control. He had a 3 nothing lead. And now Gasca trying to pin Otero. Nothing yet. There's, there's the, the two. Takedown. And that should put it away. We're at five to one. Less than 10 seconds left in the bout. And he's looking for more. Gaska the third, just unrelenting, five one. And picks up two more, it'll end up seven one. Javier Gaska the third, he got better over the course of that one. And we have had several wide margins today, but that one is probably just as good despite the score being as close as it was for some time. But you never felt like Gaska the third was not in command. At 138, this could be one of the best matches. Mark Marchetti from Tennessee and Father Ryan High School from Nashville, or as he says, Smashville, will step in. He is going to wrestle next year at Army to follow in the footsteps of his brother Patrick. Colt Cotton from Benton, Pennsylvania and Benton High School will be his opponent. Now, Colt Cotton is going to be wrestling in state in Pennsylvania at Bloomsburg University. They're a Division I program. But Father Ryan is a, is a very, very good uh, Tennessee program, and his brother is a redshirt sophomore at the Military Academy. So we both of our wrestlers here now are, are going on to D1 careers. All right, now this looks like an, like an Oklahoma State-Iowa match of old. Marchetti in a stagger stance and Colt Cotton kind of square stance and play a little more defense. Nice little front headlock by Marchetti, but he can't convert. Nice, nice counter by Colt Cotton from Benton High School. Marchetti went 37 and one to capture his first career state title. And you know, he and his, his brother Patrick, I'm sure have had tremendous practices and I'll put that in quotes in the basement growing up no probably in the living room smashing <laughs> all the furniture like all brothers do all wrestling brothers do 
Yeah, you can spar, just look after the furniture, but for some reason, furniture's always got to go. Now, that was a nice shot by Cole Cotton. That's his first, first real shot at an offensive move. He scored first with a, with a quick escape. But there's that little knee thing, kind of Kerry Collat kind of invented. Mark Marchetti in the red. Colt Cotton in the Navy, 1-0. A score for Colt Cotton. Marchetti was sixth here last year, 145, dropped down to 138 for this tournament. Colt Cotton was runner-up here last year at 132, so he moved up. So a lot of uh, big high school national expertise out here. Not a lot of scoring, but a lot of really good wrestling. Nearly getting out cleanly was Marchetti. Marchetti looks to be a little bigger too. He is still searching, but he may run out of time here. I think we're probably gonna have deep. So third period will be one nothing Colt Cotton. I'd say in this case, Kevin, both probing for the most part. Yeah, yeah. They well, they 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 both really really good scramblers. They've been a number of in deep. Both of them been in deep, and the other one just scrambled really well to come out of it. Marquette can't get that, that ooh, quick escape. Ooh, ooh. Now this. Marquette on top. He's he's pinning himself. He's pinning himself. He's pinning himself. They've. Been, that right shoulder stays elevated for Colt Cotton, who is hanging on for dear now life he, right now. Now he's still in control. He's still in control. That's the interesting thing. Colt Cotton still with a 1-0 lead. Now the reversal from Mark Marchetti. And I really think that Colt Cotton was pinned and the referee was watching the, the head position rather than looking for the, for the pin. So let's see if he can come out and then it's going to be, be on a takedown. I don't think that Marchetti will ride him. Oh, but he was waiting for it that time. And the escape, Cole Cotton. So 2-2. Two, two. Cotton got the cut. Cleaned so up pretty well on the right forehead. And Marchetti getting aggressive. Marchetti with a little knee pull, but Cotton not real slick, but real tough. He went, he went kind of off balance, but he's so he's he he must be a really strong kid because he wasn't in real good position, still almost got the takedown. Marchetti back in on an inside single, but they've been in this position four times. And Marchetti has not been able to convert. And let's see, they're not going to call that two as long as he controls that leg. The crowd's calling for two, but I think those are all Mark Marchetti fans. They are not in a position of control. This is another scramble, and we're down to 15 seconds. 15. And good call. Yep, good call by the official. Yep. There was no control. But Marchetti has been the aggressor. And he's going to figure this out. Ooh, and there's Cotton coming back in. Look like Cotton tried to. Oh, he's got a body lock, but there's two, one, and we're going to overtime. So for the second time, we'll have overtime here in Virginia Beach. And they're not backing down. They're, they're going after it hard, and, and Mark Marchetti back in on a single leg. And Cole Cotton back in on the ankle saying, you're not going to win that position. Do something else because you're not winning this position. Well, he's trying something different. Ow, ow, ow. That's rough on the knee. He's, he's trying to get behind. He's trying to get his ankle back. And there's 18 seconds left. And that's, but it's not two. 
It's still not two because he's, they've been in this position five times now. Cotton just continues to have a good control of either the leg or Marchetti. That is what is keeping him alive. In, in this bout, we will go to a second overtime sudden death. And Cotton has been very effective coming out. And it's 30 seconds. This may bode well for Cotton. He's been he's come out easily and he had well they both came out easily. So let's let's see if either one of them does something a little different this time and tries to ride out the 30 seconds. Yeah, okay. That time he knew he was gonna hit a roll, so he just he controlled the the, the body. Oh, We've been in this position before. He has the ankle, but this time, all he wants to do is just control, and they're gonna let this go. Oh, he didn't let it go. That's good call. He should have called a stalemate because they really couldn't improve their position. So Cotton now has six seconds to come out, or he has to ride Marchetti out. Looking a little winded, Cole Cotton, but it's been a really, really tough bout for both of them. And the caution, caution on Cotton, he tried to tried to gauge the uh, gauge the start. Yeah, and with just six seconds left, not a bad gamble there for Cole Cotton. And this will take care of our second overtime. So this is our longest bout. Mark Marchetti, just, just from the eye test, Kevin, appears to be wearing Colt Cotton down. But Cotton will now be on top, Marchetti underneath. And again, he comes up high. He's got these. The escape goes. And he gets the escape, so Cotton has to get a takedown. He should, he, that's a half shot. He should have taken a better shot. Marchetti. They'll let this one go. They will let this one go. This is where we're gonna end up. And Mark Marchetti with a dominating 3-2 decision. No, that was a great match by both. It came down to a, a, a ride out. Mark Marchetti seemed to be just a little better, but Colt Cotton did what he had to do to take it into double overtime. Nice job by Mark Marchetti. Good luck at the Army next year. Creating a financial safety net can seem like an impossible goal. Complicated, intimidating, something other people get to do. But once you take the first step, you'll find there's nothing standing in your way. MetLife. I can do this. So we move on to 145, Justin Arthur from Huntington High in West Virginia. He won the Dutton Award as the overall best wrestler in that state. Tom's River South High School is where Bryant Clagan from the state of New Jersey, Tom's River, New Jersey, 
who is the all-time wins leader at Tom's River South. He will wrestle next year at Ryder. He will step in. He is a three-time NHSCA champion, so you know he loves the long ride down here from New Jersey down the turnpike. Arthur, it appear, would be the favorite, but you've got two Division I wrestlers. We've seen a couple of pretty good ones already. I I think it's kind of hard to go against Claggan. He's won this, tight, this tournament three times. He's ranked third nationally at 145 pounds. And he's really, really strong. But they're going after each other. Back to action. Claggan sitting, trying to trying to lock up a cradle. And this could be if he locks that up. And he got the got the reversal, and he's getting back points, and he's got close to a fall. Wow. Claggan. That Just a couple beautiful. points, but that could have been disastrous for Justin Arthur. There's two more. Five nothing. Explosion. And a reversal, so it's five two. I'll 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 give up two to get five. That was really that was a real show of strength and balance to do that. Let's see if 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 uh, Justin Arthur changes up or he goes back to the crab. He's really good with it. Uh, he goes right back to it. And now he's got a bar. Justin Arthur has a arm bar, and he is good with tilts. But Claggan, Claggan is, a, is basically a beast. He said, I don't know what he did. He just came around on him and picked up two no backs. So he's, he takes a 7-2 lead into the third period. B.J. Claggan, Tom's River, New Jersey. All right, Claggan will start in the top position here to start the third period. I, I'm always impressed when I see somebody who's a two-time New Jersey State champion. They are, they are so few and far in between. Claggan. And the escape for Justin Arthur. We'll see if that gets him going. Down four as the third period begins. Arthur not as funky. Oh, nice, nice. Nice takedown by Justin Arthur. A little dump. We've seen that in a couple of different matches. Really effective high school move. Not so effective in college. But for some reason, coaches say, okay, you can't do that anymore, and they teach them how. But in high school, it works time after time. But he now has, yeah. He has to, I was going to say, he has to cut him because he's not going to turn him. But he has to take him to his back or take him down twice. That gets Bryant Claggan another point. He's got a three-point lead as well, under a minute to go. And that's probably the bout. 10-5, Bryant Claggan. And just, he follows just follows so well, Brian Claggett. And just, it was Justin Arthur tried a takedown, kind of relaxed, and Claggett hit the reshot, takes the takedown, runs his lead to, to five points. 20 seconds left, Claggett with a four point lead. Now locked up the front headlock. And the takedown. Nope. Called it off, called a takedown, pulled it back down. Gave him the reaction time. Claggett doesn't need to score, not going to look to score. We're three seconds left. We're going to end up Brian Claggett with a 10-6 decision, Times River decision. Ryder getting a real good one, Kevin. He also considered Rutgers and Iowa State. He is a four-time NHSCA champion, Brian Claggett. Creating a financial safety net can seem like an impossible goal. Complicated, intimidating, something other people get to do. But once you take the first step, 
you'll find there's nothing standing in your way. MetLife. I can do this. How about some of the sights and sounds here in Virginia Beach? Chad Walsh, the senior from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, has enjoyed things as he takes a look at Joey LaValle. Let's hear from Chad Walsh. I'm 152 pounds, and I'm not afraid of anything. So that's Chad Walsh walking on the beach. He'll take on Joey LaValle. He is hoping this is not his final high school bout or one of the last two with a couple of the tournaments on the way but he wants to wrestle in college for Chad Walsh this is the opportunity of a lifetime a victory year would be eye opening and resume boosting so at 152 to close out the 2013 NHSCA Senior Nationals Kevin what kind of chance does he stand? Lavalley is is the real deal but Chad Walsh was in the Beast of the East Finals this year and was losing 5 nothing, and took Russ Park Parsons, who was ranked sixth in the country, straight to his back and finally ended up losing 6-5. So he's another one of those guys that the score is kind of immaterial. Blair, who is a, the real deal. Joey LaValle Joey on top. He's got the 2-1 edge. Come up midway through the second period. I still say it's not over till it's over because Walsh is unconventional. And there's the escape. LaValle got into a kind of a weird position. He said, I don't want any parts of this. Let's go back to our feet. He LaValle went 52-3 and three this past year, so it's not like he went undefeated so there maybe is a window for Chad Walsh and I think we're seeing it and, and, and that may be not optimal it's, it's the end of a long season and then there are some wrestling coaches that say that's too much 50 the individual instruction and the technique is better than going out and wrestling similar to what you see in basketball as there's the point picked up the, Joe LaValle reversal two on the reverse so many people will say there's too many kids wrestling a couple times a day, even during the summer, do their clubs, versus the individual instruction. Similar to the argument you hear in basketball where there's just too many games and not enough actual gym and instructional time. Yeah. Now, now Walsh, Walsh was looking to, to just do that, you know, almost like a Merkel working on the left side. Lavalley had seen it because they knew exact they knew exactly what was coming and they were looking for it. But it's a very good match. Besides the first takedown by Lavalley, it's been it's been tight. So we're at 4-3. We're at 112 left in regulation. Joey Lavalley from Reno High School in Reno, Nevada, four times new Nevada State champion with a 4-3 lead in the red singlet. And, but he is not shutting down. Love to see that. He is not shutting down. He's still working on offense. 4-3, Chad Walsh, 
Again, Chad Walsh he's has on, had again, he's uncommitted here. So a victory over a kid signed with Missouri and Joey Lavalley could go a long way in enhancing his stock. But he's got 15 seconds left, trailing by one. Chad Walsh. And Lavalley has managed to work himself to the edge for the last minute, but he's done it kind of well. He's got a he's got a stall warning to give. And he's not getting the stall call. He's not going to get a stall call now. Yeah, Walsh went after him, and all Lavalley had to do is just retreat yeah. a few steps. Four seconds left. And it'll take something particularly special here from Chad Walsh. And they got a caution there. Three seconds left. Here he comes. And he knew he was going to get a stall call, but you're not. I, and I agree with that. You do not want them to win on a, or put it in overtime on a stall. Joey Lavalley with a with a 4-3 decision, did enough to win, got the first takedown, and made it stand up. Parker Von Egedine from North Carolina. Parker from Piedmont High School, hometown of Monroe in North Carolina, and he will be attending SEC Power, Missouri's. So Jadane Bernstein, seventh last year. You've seen that happen younger and younger, the decisions that these wrestlers have to make to, to pursue this sport at a high level in the offseason. I, I think it's become that way in most sports. You either, and there's the escape. Von Egedy gets the first point. He just, he stood up. Bernstein's also a heck of a football player. He was an all area linebacker out of that Lehigh Valley, very, very tough football and wrestling area. And that's that's New Jersey and PA there. So he's he's a linebacker. He looks like a linebacker. They both look like linebackers. And there's our first first. It's tight. And there's the takedown for Von Egedy. And the reversal for for Bernstein. For Bernstein. 3-2 is the score, so quick scoring here in the final few seconds of this second period. Von Egedy will be in the down position, so the chance for the escape with nine seconds remaining in the second period at 170 pounds. The second bout of the 2013 NHSCA Senior Nationals from Virginia Beach. I thought that he'd pop up quicker and try and get that escape. And Von Egedy does so, not. Escaped so easily at the end of the uh, at the beginning of the second period. I thought so too, Kevin. It looked like he needed an, at least an additional two to three seconds for that to happen. So now, Jadane Bernstein, a chance to tie here with the quick escape as we begin the third period. And Bernstein easily will take it Von Egedy, not even trying there. So we're even up at the start of the third period, three all. Von Egedy looked at his coach and said, I want to let him up. Coach says, ride him. He says, okay. And he rode him for two seconds. He, he knows that he wasn't gonna ride Bernstein. So he says, I'm gonna beat him on his feet. And there he is in really deep on a single leg. Now to a double and there's the takedown. And that's why he let him go. He knew he could take him down. That was a really, really, really nice shot by Von Egedy. So now he goes up five, three, but we still have plenty of time left in this bout for Bernstein to come back. That's supreme confidence from Parker Von Egedy. 5-3, still a minute left in this third period. Von oh, Egedy. and there's the escape by Bernstein. Now we're at 5-4. Von Egedy kind of let down a little bit on the edge, thought they were going to call him out of bounds. With the new rules now that they they basically, you got a toenail in bounds, they, they let action continue, and I think it's a, I think it's good. I think it's good for the sport. But let's see if, if Von Egedy... I, if he goes to defense right away, I think that's a mistake. There's too much time left. 33 seconds left. Parker Von Egedy with a 5-4 lead. They're on their feet. But Von Egedy has been the aggressor and has had the better of the shots. Now there's, we're under 30. 
Von Eggedy being real smart, kind of put him to the out of bounds and then just wouldn't let him back in. Hard to get called stalling when the other guy's out of bounds. So 20 seconds. Now he shouldn't shoot. Bernstein not as smooth on his feet. There's a warning, warning stalling, five seconds. We're down to three seconds. Jadane but Bernstein is gonna have to act quickly. He trails by a point, 5-4 five, for 170. And, and Von Eggedy just too strong on his feet. 5-4, Parker Von Eggedy at a great high school program, Piedmont High School, ranked number seven at one point during the season in the country. Creating a financial safety net can seem like an impossible goal. Complicated, intimidating, something other people get to do. But once you take the first step, you'll find there's nothing standing in your way. MetLife. I can do this. Calvin Oaks, he'll be in the red singlet from Hoaxie High School in Kansas. He will be taking on Kyle Perot of California. And in the case of Kyle Perot, maybe even adjusting to the officials this week certainly could be a challenge, but he has been here last week. So you figure Kyle Perot and the age of 17, he has been all over. He's undecided on college. And this is a big next minute for him as Caparo hoping to impress remaining college coaches that are still looking for some wrestlers for the, to fill out their class of 2013. Caparo is undecided and so is Calvin Oaks. So the winner of this one will enhance their stock to try to shop themselves around for the late signing period in the NCAA. So an important final few seconds of this third period and perhaps overtime in Virginia Beach for these two young men. Now, Peralt's been the aggressor in this match. He's had about five good shots to, to, um, to Oaks's one throw by, but Oaks's one throw by was the most effective, was the closest to scoring. Oaks really, really good tying up those arms. Now they're gonna go out of bounds, no change. We're 14 seconds left in regulation. It, but 14 seconds left in regulation. And there's that throw by. This time, Peralt was ready for it. Both of them use a really nice whizzer. And it, there's the takedown. Two seconds to go. Kyle Peralt. Takedown with two seconds to go. He wins. He is a national champion here in Virginia Beach. For Kevin Hazard, Ralph Pinorchik sings so long and goodbye from sunny Virginia Beach.